Welcome to Electron Online. So, what is the structure of a neutron star? Well, it's simply a ball about 20 kilometers across that is filled with neutrons, protons, and electrons. But is there some way to try to figure out what it might be like inside? What is there some sort of structure inside? And of course, this is purely theoretical. We'll never be able to go to a neutron star. We'll never be able to figure these things out by actually going to visit there and checking things out for ourselves. We just have to theorize it based upon what we understand and know. So based upon that, they've come up with a model. And again, that model may be or may not be correct. Just won't warn us. That things that, that states that there's potentially four different regions inside a neutron star. What we definitely do know is that the pressure inside is far greater than it is towards the edge of the neutron star, so that the density, therefore, is also far greater. In other words, the nuclear particles, the neutrons and protons, are pushed to their very limit of how close they can be towards the center, and they're not nearly as tightly packed towards the edge of the neutron star and that's a big that's a big deal understanding that aspect of it because we understand that as you start pushing things closer and closer and closer together really pushing against that nuclear strong force eventually you push them outside the ideal position where they would like to be so you have the nuclear strong force pushing back we have the pressure pushing this way and if the pressure overpowers the nuclear strong force the very center of the, nucle of, the, of the neutron star will actually collapse. And once that collapses, there's nothing that can stop the collapse of the rest of the neutron star. It simply disappears into what we'd call a black hole. So that means that the density at the center, which is, we're up here, at the inner, they call that the inner core, the region right here, let's call it the inner core, to a distance of about three kilometers away from the center, where the density is greater than twice the average density of the whole neutron star. When we take the total mass divided by the total volume, we'll get the average density. So you can see that the density at the center is more than twice as much the average density of the whole neutron star, which means that those neutrons and protons and electrons are pushed together so tightly that they've pushed it outside the proper or the most likely the, um, equilibrium point of a normal nucleus of an atom. What does it look like inside? Well, they estimate or presume, based on their theory, that it's something like a quark-gluon plasma, so that there's gluons and that the quarks kind of intermingled with one another. Beyond that, we get to what we call the outer core, which takes up the region from 3 to 9 kilometers away from the center. Remember that it's about 12 kilometers in radius. And so there the density is anywhere from a half times the average density to twice the average density. So on the boundary between the inner and the outer core, we would say that the density is roughly about twice the average density at that point. So there we, we theorize that it's a mixture of neutrons and protons into what we would call a Fermi liquid, so that they're free to move around, but that they're not separated from another. And within them is a, a small amount of electrons that move throughout the small gaps that may be there. And so that's kind of like a Fermi gas. And of course, the electrons would also be repelling one another, but obviously not sufficiently to push the neutron star apart, although there are some forces evolved there as well. Then if you go beyond that, we get to what we'd call the inner crust. So we have the outer crust and the inner crust. The inner crust, which is about one to two kilometers thick, there the density is far less than the average density of the neutron star. So you can see that there's really a big difference between the density of the edge of the neutron star versus the center. There we simply have together packed electrons, neutrons, and other nuclei, nuclei that potentially would be greater than just a simple neutron or proton by itself. And then finally, towards the outer crust, we have what we would call ions and electrons. So ions that could be that you have protons and neutrons pushed together into an ionic soup, so to speak, and their electrons would then be free to flow around them because it would be too hot and too dense for the electrons to couple with the ions and turn into atoms. So there's obviously no potential for having any sort of atoms inside a neutron star. Everything is down pushed down to the density of nuclear material, but you still would have free-flowing electrons and ions moving around uh, throughout each other. I don't know if the ions would, would do a lot of moving until you get to higher densities and higher temperatures. At the center, towards right here, you'd see potentially more of a 
liquidy formation where things could move around where there's probably probably more in a crystalline structure so again these are just theoretical models we have no real certainty that this is exactly what it looks like but as we understand more and more about the structure of neutrons and protons and the and the interaction between quarks and the gluons we get a better and better idea what it might be like inside a neutron star at least it's a star start it's a model and we'll build upon it as time goes by and more information gets to be known and that is how it's done Yeah, I'll talk a little bit more about that. It turns out that the more mass a neutron star has, typically the smaller it becomes. The less mass, the bigger it becomes. The enormous pressure of atom material will actually push the star to a smaller size. But we'll talk a little bit more about that in a later video. Okay, good question. So is everything racially the same? The different parts to it inside? Well, you have the same kind of material, but the structure of it, the physical structure, differs because of the enormous pressure encountered towards the center. So that the... So the center is bigger? Uh, bigger? Was that? It's the one. Well, it's... The, the one is bigger? No, one is only out to about three kilometers, so yeah, it's only... Yeah, let's say that the, we say the more massive it is, then it wouldn't be the density... Oh, you have more mass per per cubic meter, and there's much higher density at the center. That's true. So the density is far greater at the center compared to the edge, probably a 10 to 1 ratio or so. But wouldn't it, it wouldn't be more? The density means it's packed closer together. Yeah, but the whole star is smaller, so everything else is smaller. Right? Oh, because of that? Well, the result of it that it's that it's 20 kilometers across. If it wasn't so densely packed, obviously, it would be a bigger and bigger star. But the reason why it's only about 20 kilometers across because it's so so dense at the center. It's still 20. Kilometers. Yeah, yeah. So it's, that's the typical density. I mean, it's typical size. There are some what we think variation in the actual size. But not a lot. Not a lot of variation. No, we're just talking about a few kilometers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Not like different size of stars. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Yeah, good observation. No. Yeah, they're all about the same size. There's a slight amount of difference depending upon how much mass they have. Okay.